Hey guys, welcome back. Mr. Wiz here. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new to this channel, I am a video game coding teacher, and I have been posting a series here on YouTube teaching people how to build fun games. Right now, we are working in Make Code Arcade. I did a whole series teaching how to do that, and right now I'm working on a mini series exclusively talking about Make Code extensions. So, today's extension, we're going to be looking at scaling. So, to get started, I decided for this example, it'd be good to go back to an old program of mine when we did the aquariums. When we were first learning about animation in the last series, we built an aquarium. So I've made some small changes to it, and I'm gonna use this for the scaling lesson. So to show you the changes that I made to my program, first things first, I did already use the animation extension, which we talked about recently. Um, so the animation extension just gives our animations a little bit more control over them. So for the fish that I had swimming around in my aquarium, I did move him to an on-game update. So now there's a new one that appears every five seconds. And I did already have him coding so that he would be switching directions, right? But now I have him coding so that when he switches directions, he also switches animation. So when he's swimming left, he looks left. When he's swimming right, he looks right. And it works pretty well. So that's what I've got going on right now. Um, I also created for the aquarium a player character. So this is new. That wasn't in the, that lesson. I decided to make myself a shark. And I gave myself animations as well. I decided to use moving animations, but also facing animations. So let me restart this program because there's a lot of fish on there now. So basically, if I swim left or right, he animates. But when I stop moving, I still want him moving a little bit, right? So that's why I used the facing left and facing right, because without that, if he moves and stops, he just kind of freezes, which doesn't look good. So that's what I've done to my animation program. I created a player. I moved the fish to an on-game update every 5,000 milliseconds, and then I gave them both animations using the animation extension. The other stuff is all pretty much the same as how I left it. I did change the names. So the jellyfish is now called jellyfish and the fish is now called fish just to help me stay organized. So what we're going to do today is we're going to turn this, what I've built here so far, into a game using scale. So one of my favorite games to play in the early days of the internet was a fish game where you would swim around in the ocean and you would eat fish that were smaller than you. But while doing that, you had to watch out for fish that were bigger than you because fish that were bigger than you would eat you. So it was a survival game where you're trying to eat fish that are smaller than you and trying to avoid fish that are bigger than you. I thought scaling would be a great opportunity to play with these dynamics as well. So we're gonna build a simple game kind of following that same premise. Before we get to the scale extension, I did want to make a note of something. In the sprite section, there is already some scale stuff here. This is relatively new. Scale, uh, uh, scaling didn't used to be in this code, but at the very bottom of the sprite section, there is a section here that lets you set scale and change scale. You will also find it in the drop downs here for set and change. You'll find scale in here where it has scale in the x direction scale in the y direction or just regular scale which is both directions so these didn't used to be there this is pretty normal with make code they are often updating their their programming updating the block options so sometimes what will happen is someone will come out with a really good extension it'll become quite popular and then the programmers at make code arcade will in, enhance their original code sometimes with something similar to the extension so you don't need the extension to change scale is what I'm trying to say because of these new features that let you set and change it here and also with the regular set and change. But the extension is still pretty cool. So we will look at it. We will look at both of them for this game. We're going to look at both of them. So the sprite extension is that one right there, the one that says sprite scaling. So when I click on it, it adds a new section to my toolbox that now says scaling right here. And it gives me four blocks. Let me change the scale by pixels, set the scale by pixels, or change scale by percentage and set scale by percentage. And then you also have options here on how you want to change it. 
whether you want to change it uniformly. I think the options are uniformly, vertically, or horizontally. And you can also set the anchor. When we'll talk all about that in a few moments. So to make the game that I want to make here, I need to have fish that I can eat, which are smaller than me, and fish that are dangerous to me, which are going to be bigger than me. So I'm going to turn these fish right here, the purple fish, into my food fish. So I'm going to grab that set scale. I can either use this one or I can use the one that was down there at the bottom. It really doesn't matter um, because anchoring is not important for what I'm doing right now. The only difference between these blocks and these blocks is that these blocks have the anchor option. We'll talk more about anchoring later, but we'll just use the regular ones for now. So I'm going to set whenever one of these fish gets created, I'm going to set its scale and I'm just going to use regular scale, not scale in the X or Y, because that does it uniformly. It scales all directions. And I'm going to make it a number less than one. So the default scale for something is one. One is the default. So I don't want to go too small or we're not going to be able to see the fish. So if I do like, if I do 0.5, for instance, it will now be half as big as it was before, which makes it really, really tiny and you lose a lot of detail there. So I'm just going to go a little bit smaller. I'm just going to go with 0.9. So I still get most of the detail of the fish. There we go. So its scale is now 0.9. My scale is exactly one. I don't have to change that. That's by default. So I want the jellyfish to be the hazard for me. So let's go ahead and set the scale of the jellyfish. And I want to see how much bigger than one I want to make it. Um, set scale. What about 1.5? What would that look like? Does that look like it could kill me? Uh, let's go bigger. Let's go with two. Oh yeah, that's a big old jellyfish. So now I have jellyfish that are two times as big as me. All right, I like it. So they have a scale of two. My other fish have a scale of 0.9. I have a scale of one. Right now when I'm interacting with each other, nothing's happening because we haven't coded that yet. Also, I haven't used the extension yet. So let's go ahead and keep going here. So what I want to happen is I'm going to create an overlap code for when the player overlaps with food. I did make the fish a food type. Um, I'm also going to change the jellyfish to a food type. So I want them both to be the same type. To change the jellyfish right now, it is projectile type. To change it, I just need to go down here near the bottom where it says set kind to. So whenever it creates a jellyfish, it's going to set the jellyfish's kind to food. So now the jellyfish and the regular fish are both food kinds. All right, so when a player overlaps with a food kind, I need it to check a size comparison. So we're gonna use some logic here. If, and now I'm gonna use this bubble that lets us pull stats from a sprite. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot the condition. If, and I'm going to use scale again, if the player's scale, so I'm using the sprite bubble to represent the player, is less than the food's scale, so I'm using other sprite to represent food. So if the player scale is less than the food's scale, which means I'm smaller, I want the game to end. I could do a lose one life or something like that, but let's just keep it simple. Let's just have the game end. All right, I'm gonna use an else if, so I can put another condition in here. Else if it's greater than, so if the player's scale is greater than the food's scale, then I want to get a point. And I also want to eat that fish. So we'll also put a destroy block in here to destroy the food fish. So if the player's scale is greater than the food scale, destroy the food. Okay, cool. So this should work. Let's test it out here. The fish are smaller than me. So if I eat them, I should get points and it's working. And the jellyfish are bigger than me. So if I touch a jellyfish, the game should end and it does. So, so far again, I haven't used the extension yet. 
all we've done is set scales and then do a little comparison of the sizes. All right, so to make this more like the game that I talked about, you want the shark to get bigger every time he eats a fish, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and use the extension for this part. So there's the scaling. I can change it by pixels or I can change it by percent. This is really up to you. I like doing percentage over pixels, um, but it's really up to you how you decide to scale things. So I'm gonna change it. Every time I get a point and I destroy that fish, I wanna change my scale and I'm gonna change it by 10%. So basically, if we're thinking about the original numbers that we had, where we had the 0.9 and the two, the shark's scale right now is one. So if I change it by 10%, it's gonna become 1.1. And if I go up another 10%, it's gonna be 1.2, then 1.3. Make sense? So going by this, how many times would I have to eat a small fish before I can be big enough for my scale is larger than two? So 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, it should take me 10 fish to get to two. Now at that point, I'm not bigger than him or smaller than him, I should be the same size. And if I eat one more fish, if I eat my 11th fish, I'll then be 2.1 and I'll be larger than the jellyfish. So let's see if this works. All right, got one, got two. I'm trying to get 11 fish so that I will be big enough to eat a jellyfish. Three, four, Five, I gotta be careful to avoid these guys. Oh. Now, if I wanna make this really crazy, I could have the jellyfish get bigger too, if they touch fish. Then they, if I did that, I'd probably wanna have less jellyfish in the game or it would get way too hard. All right, I've eaten eight so far. 11's the number I'm looking for. Once I hit 11, I should be big enough to eat a jellyfish. I'm at 10, 11. Hey, I'm big enough now. I can eat jellyfish without dying. Woohoo. And now I'm getting super big. Megalodon. So, of course, if I wanted to make this into a fully fleshed out game, I would probably want to build in multiple levels so that once I reached a certain size, my scale would reset back to one but the fish that I'm eating and the fish that are eating me would change, right? So like the next level, the jellyfish would have a scale of 0.9 and then I'd have a new enemy on the scene trying to eat me. Does that make sense? So I could have multiple levels that way where every level the food item changes and the enemy changes. So yeah, looks like scale works pretty good here. Okay, let's go back to the code and... We talked about uniformly, so you could have, I have them changing in all directions, which is really what I wanted, but I do have the option of also doing it vertically or horizontally. So vertically means only the height would be changing, only his Y direction would be changing. And horizontally means only the X direction would be changing. I don't really ever use those, but theoretically you could. So like maybe you want to get silly with it and maybe the main character is a kid and they're eating donuts. And every time they eat a donut, they get a little bit fatter. <laughs> so you could do horizontal for that, right? Or maybe whenever they eat healthy food, they get taller and you could go vertical for that. It's really up to you, right? So normally I wouldn't worry too much about vertical or horizontal. Usually I just use uniformly, but you can do these if you want to. Maybe you have a vine that you want to grow in, or in your game. So you might have it scale vertically and not horizontally, right? For the anchor, this is really saying what's not changing. So for my game, I kept it at middle. Middle is pretty standard. Basically what that means is as I'm getting larger, the middle of my sprite is staying in the same part of the screen. It's just getting bigger around that point. You can anchor from different points, top, left, bottom, right. You can even do one of the corners. So when would you do that? Um, a good example of that would be like the Mario games that we were building. If Mario gets a mushroom, he gets taller, right? So if I was to do something like that, I would want to anchor him to the bottom. 
So let me just do something real quick so I can show you what I'm talking about here. I'm going to create something that works kind of like the Mario mushroom. Um, I don't think there are mushrooms in the gallery. We'll just use a piece of cake. We'll go like Alice in Wonderland with this. Okay. So I'll make it a food type. And when my player overlaps with food, he'll get bigger, right? So we will have to destroy the food item so it only happens once. And we don't get an infinite loop here. And I'll just use the regular stuff. I don't even have to use the extension for this because down here at the bottom, they also have anchoring. So I can use change or I can have set. Set would also work. So I'll set scale to two, anchor in middle. So here's what happens. If Mario, oh, if my Mario style character eats the cake, he'll get twice as big, but since it's anchoring in the middle, it'll happen in all directions. So watch how that kind of bugs this game. Boom, he became too big and fell through the floor because he expanded in all directions, including his feet. So to make this game better, to make it more realistic for this style game, I would wanna anchor it at the bottom, basically saying that his feet stay where they are and the rest of him grows without moving his feet. So now if I do the same thing, because it's anchoring the bottom of the sprite, he should stay on top of this brick. And he did, because he's still the same size, he still grew twice as big, but his feet stayed in the same part of the program. His feet didn't move, the rest of him moved. So anchoring is basically deciding what part of the sprite stays where it is. Okay, so I think I may have covered everything that I wanted to cover in this video. We talked about scaling the normal way, we talked about scaling with the extension, pixels and percent, they both work the same way, it's just what you're measuring with, right? We talked about the direction, we talked about the anchor. So I think my work here is done. If you learned something new today, please click that like button. And you built something using scaling and you wanna show it off, please copy your link. Get the link by clicking on the share button, sharing the project, copy that link and put it in the comments so that myself and others can play your game. I will see you guys next time with some more extension videos.